know, Jack, as someone pointed out recently, you hate everything. Well, that's not entirely true. I think I should clarify. I don't hate everything. I just hate people. All people? Most people. <laughs> you see, it's people that are responsible for the destruction of the natural world. One of the things that I think I hold most dear. Well, don't worry, because today I'm going to take you to a place that might restore your faith in humanity. Let's go. The place in question is a sprawling forest on the outskirts of Chengdu, which is dotted with enclosures housing China's most iconic symbol. This is the snappily named Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding. Well, I'm so glad we can find an activity that Jack can get on board with, although he has made this into quite the serious matter. I, on the other hand, are just so excited to see these black and white furry friends. It's been five years since we've been in China and we've not actually come to see the pandas in real life. As we're leaving soon, I can't think of a better way to end our time in China than seeing their national treasure. There's just one slight problem though, these are some very sleepy animals. There is absolutely no guarantee that we will see anything except for a few balls of gently snoring black and white fur clinging to tree branches. With that in mind, we sprang out of bed at an ungodly hour and hauled our asses across the city, hoping to catch the pandas as they took into their breakfast. Apparently, much like me, the only thing that can entice them out of bed is food. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I didn't sleep last night because I was just like, <laughs> I'm gonna go see some pandas. Gonna go see some pandas. Gonna go see some pandas. 55 yuan for a ticket, Jack. You're pretty cheap, so how do yeah, you feel about that price? Yeah, absolute bargain. I mean, that's uh, only like, what? Oh, master's my strong point. 18 of these. Also, top tip, guys. Don't forget your passport or a picture of your passport, because you will need it to get in. I don't know. This map looks pretty overwhelming, doesn't it? <laughs> it's massive, isn't it? Look, there's like a red dotted line, so I reckon we should just follow that and see what happens. Where are we? Um, one, I guess. Uh -uh. No? Try again. So, maps are not exactly Jack's strong point, it seems. He thinks we're in a completely different place to where we are. Screw it. We'd better start trekking through the park before the little fellas and palettes go back to sleep. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm walking full speed ahead. I am on a panda mission, guys. I cannot wait to see one in real life. We've got our first panda sighting, guys. You can see it just behind me. Unfortunately, it is asleep. The eye behind me just shouted, Chi Chuang La, which means wake up, get out of bed. <laughs> Apparently, pandas nap for two to four hours between feeding sessions, during which time they continue to poop. So unless you want to see some very sleepy pandas covered in fecal matter, then you'd better time your visit just right. We found our first awake panda. He's just having a chill, eating his breakfast with a, a view of Gulping tourists watching him, but he seems happy enough and he's so cute. This young panda's enclosure is so cute, isn't it? I don't oh think God. they're fully grown yet. They just seem pretty content just uh, munching down bamboo, they're lying so on their back. Cute, and there's some super, super high in the tree, and you think, how did you get up there? This is just my ideal day. The sun is shining, we're out in nature, we get to see some cuddly, cuddly, cuddly furry friends. So cute, aren't they? And I'm with you. Oh, bless you. Oh my word, this is such nice footage. Getting a bit emotional there, Jack. Oh, it's just so beautiful. It literally makes me want to cry. Like, just what a beautiful creature. Oh, I really have cracked this hard. Oh, Jill. Yeah. And this certainly wasn't Jack's only misty eye moment today. Back when I was a little Ute Dem, I used to sing this on the uh, in the assembly every day. <laughs> I do feel sad though seeing them in the in the enclosures here, but I know it's kind of a necessary evil, I guess. Yeah, but it's for conservation purposes, so that pandas can live on to see another day. Well, I think that somber note is our cue to spend a minute talking about exactly why this place is so important. And then we can go back to some more super cute panda content. Trust me guys, you are in for a treat. So why are these super cute balls of fluff endangered? 
Well, to start off with, they're not the most hardy of animals. Their young have a very low survival rate in the wild. I don't know if you've seen a panda baby, but they are absolutely tiny, so I'm kind of not surprised. Also, given that they don't move very fast, they are pretty vulnerable to poachers. They prefer eating and chilling. Of course, conflict with humans has played a big part in their plight as well. As China's population started to increase, the uh, forest habitat that pandas call home was gradually cut down by hill farmers looking for more space for their agricultural land. This meant that pandas were forced up to like a higher altitude. The problem with that is, at higher altitudes, a lot less bamboo grows. This means that they'll be much more vulnerable should that dwindling bamboo supply become threatened. Uh-oh. I don't like where this is going. So in the 1980s, much of the bamboo that was growing up high in the Chonglai Mountains, the pandas call home, suddenly died out. There were starving pandas all over the place. But thankfully, the uh, Chengdu Zoo actually sent out some volunteers to go rescue some pandas and bring them back. Now, I don't think a zoo is a suitable place for any animal, especially one as illustrious as this absolute beauty behind me. But thankfully, in 1987, this center was established. And since then, they've been able to breed 150 pandas from the original six that they brought here. Wow, what an achievement. But can we go see the babies now, Jack? So flipping cute. I reckon that this lady must have the best job in the entire world. Oh my God, my heart is literally melting. I think that's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm honestly speechless, just watching them like play with each other in the crib, all the little cubs together. Oh Such God. little happy little fellas and it fellettes. Was, it yeah. was so freaking cute. I feel like I'm gonna cry. So oh, I've never seen anything like that. And wait, there's more. She's taking them outside. Oh, they're gonna play outside. It looks like so much fun. They just look like big cuddly goofballs. Oh God, they're so cute. When the, the two that keep wrestling together reminds me of me and my brother when we were little. Oh, adorables. Oh my God, they're just so cute. We've got to go in again. Yeah, one time seeing the little babies is not enough, is it? Here at the centre, they uh, celebrate every birth like it's some kind of miracle. Because you know what? It kind of is. They usually only have like one cub, maybe two at a time. And the fact that there's so few left in the wild means that um, it's increasingly hard for a female to find a mate. Plus the fact that they have a notoriously low sex drive means that, yeah, every birth really is a miracle. God, I'm starting to sound religious now, aren't I? I guess some people, they come to find God in their life. I guess I've come to find pandas. Man, this is so adorable. Like, I love these little descriptions they have of all of the different pandas and their personalities and their little quirks and traits. I think it probably makes it a lot easier for guests who come here to relate to the animals, like relate to the pandas. And it's gonna make people ultimately give more about them in the future, hopefully. Yeah, I think that's the best aspect of this center. It really helps to teach people why it is so important for us to protect these majestic animals. And besides the educational aspect, coming here is simply a lot of fun. We came on a weekday, so our fellow guests were mostly retired folk walking around, taking photos, and generally having an absolute whale of a time. Yeah, and if you're uh, too cheap to fork out for the uh, audio commentary, then just follow along the groups of IEs and they'll give you a running commentary as you go along. <laughs> So this is the Giant Panda Base Research Center, but they do also have red pandas here as well. I feel a little bit sorry for them because I feel like the giant pandas get all the attention, but these guys are just as cute, so make sure you visit them. These little cuties are in fact much more closely related to raccoons, weasels and skunks than they are to giant pandas. This whole area is like this amazing kind of like bamboo forest and it's so lovely to walk around, but it actually serves a much more useful purpose as well. They uh, actually cultivate this bamboo as well as different shrubs and then they use that to feed the pandas because as you know, 
pandas need a lot of food. Pandas need a lot of bamboo. Yeah. Oh my god, I just cannot go. Cuteness overload. Can we just like maybe not have kids and instead just get baby pandas? I want to play, it's like no. I'm trying to sleep. This park is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I keep checking the map and it looks like we've just not moved at all. There's roads that go through the whole of the park and people seem to be getting on these like little golf buggies. We decided to walk. Kind of regretting that, not gonna lie. As the pandas were very much back in nap mode by this point, we decided to call it quits after walking through half the park. But there is still one very important mission I need to fulfill. Who's that for? It's for my little niece. Bloody hell, another gift shop. How many of these are there? Of course, I needed to buy a cuddly panda for myself too. So cute, look at it. And another one. How many of these are there? No, no, it's enough. So Jack, how have you felt about our little trip today? Oh my God, it has been amazing. But do you mind if I get deep for a second? Oh, go on then, get real deep. Well, coming here today has given me a little glimmer of hope for the future. They've done such an amazing job with this project. And you know what? Conservation is a long process. It takes time, it takes resources, and of course, a hell of a lot of money. money yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> So it kind of gives me some hope, you know, I, I've been feeling in recent years like mankind is on a one-way road to destruction and ultimately extinction. But seeing this project makes me think maybe if the Chinese government threw the weight of their resources behind fighting the climate crisis, maybe the world could have a future after all. Okay, yes, that was deep. Well, on that note, guys, I hope that's given you a little bit of food for thought. And I hope you enjoyed this video. We sure did. We definitely did. Leave us a comment letting us know who was your very favorite friend. As always, like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Bye.